this, I would like to move on to extracurricular activities. Yeah. So what, what were your major extracurricular activities, biggest achievement in each type, and any special advice or stories? Let's see. Um, I mean, definitely Math Olympiad was a huge part of my life. Um, yeah. Like, I started from 2009 when I was just in grade six and I continued until I was in grade 12. And even when I came to MIT, I took part in like the Putnam Math competition. Oh, wow. So, it, like, it's been a part of my life since like I was in grade six. <laughs> so that's definitely, that's definitely one of the biggest extracurricular activities that I've had in my life. And I guess the biggest achievement is going to uh, the international level and winning a medal there. Um, did say, you win, did you, like which medal did you win for just for the audience? Um, so I won a silver medal in the International Math Olympiad in 2015. I also won a couple of bronze medals in the Asian Pacific Math Olympiad. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of my biggest like biggest biggest accomplishments in high school. Um, the other uh, accomplishment I really want to mention is that we had a math club back in Maimanshin called the Maimanshin Parallel Math School. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of parallel math is that Olympiad math is kind of quite separate from uh, academic math, no matter like what medium you are in in Bangladesh. It's so our idea was that, okay, we're doing all these academic math uh, and that's like definitely helping our, uh, helping, hel helping to form our base. But we are also doing all these advanced math that are kind of parallel to the academic curriculum. So that's where the parallel math school name came from. Um, originally, we started in 2009 and I was just a member and um, we uh, we had uh, Shomitra Bhai who was basically demonstrating to us diff uh, on like different topics and like we learned a lot from him. Like basically my Olympiad base was formed with his help. Um, and then like later on as he got busier and busier, uh, the ones among us who went on to participate in math camps and maybe take part in international math olympiads. Um, we took, uh, we, like basically we took over the whole instructor role and we kept kept it going until like a very long time, pretty much until we left, uh, until we left my machine and came to MIT. Um, Abib and I were uh, instructing right before we even came to MIT. And I think there, uh, there are still people instructing there and it's still, uh, like, if not for the quarantine, it should have been like a pretty active club, even now. Um, and that's definitely a huge part of my high school life because we also won the prize for the best math club in the, in the, in the country, I think in like 20, 13 or 2014 um, and it was amazing to get to know all these younger people and kind of guide them through the same path that we've taken and kind of ignite the passion for math in them so that's another very big ECA that I have um, outside that I was pretty active in my school, participating in uh, debate slash public speaking um, or say chess. Um, and I think this is a very good general advice for anyone who's trying to build their ECA profile. You don't have to go out of your way to do something extremely huge, um, such as like building up a social movement or something like that. Sure, like definitely there are people like that and they're definitely amazing for what, they, what they're what they doing, but you don't have to feel like, okay, everything I do has to be in that scale. All you have to do is to be like active in all the activities that goes on in your school and you will end up with a fairly decent um, ECA profile. I think that's one thing that a lot of people forget and a lot of people should remember. That is 